You have to be able to communicate your ideas because I think a lot of people at Tandon have you know, really good ideas. If they don't develop that skill, then they won't be able to communicate those ideas to other people in the future. My name is Peter Milani. I studied at NYU Tandon Engineering, which was formerly known as NYU Polytechnic University. Um, I studied civil engineering with a minor in construction management and finance, and I graduated in May 2016. I work at Turner Construction, um, and I think a lot of people, when they automatically hear construction, they think of like being out on the site and building a building. Um, I work in the office, um, so I am in the estimating department. Um, basically what we do is we receive uh, proposals from people who have a lot of money and they want to build buildings or fit out spaces like NYU. Um, and we basically bid on the jobs to win the job. Um, sometimes we are handed jobs and we have to develop budgets. Um, so there's a lot of communication going back and forth between us internally, the client, uh, subcontractors, and you know, all the other parties that are involved. The people that I work with are great. Um, everybody is very, you know, we're around the same age, so it's very, everybody kind of has a similar mindset. Everybody is very motivated to, you know, put out a really good product um, to, I guess, maintain the reputation that Turner has developed. I would say that's probably the best thing. Like, everybody has, like, that kind of mindset of, like, moving forward towards a goal. I would say 100% of the work that I do is collaborative. Um, we work in a space where they kind of, like the physical space, they knock down the top portion of walls where you usually have cubicles so everybody can talk to each other because all the time you're constantly, you know, reaching over to the person next to you or like calling over to the person behind you. You know, did you pick up, you know, the scope or did you look through the drawings or any deadlines we have to meet? You know, everything is constantly collaborating with the people that you work with, collaborating with your upper management, making sure that they know, you know what the deadlines are and they know if there's any problems that they can put the fires out. Um, and then there's a lot of collaboration externally with you know, the architect, the consultant, and the owners that are involved. Back in the day, they consider it, they call it old school mentality where you shake hands, you, know, you have a phone conversation and that's it. Um, nowadays, you know, everything is kind of moving over to email. You know, everything is, you know, you have to have backup. So there's constant communication via email. Sometimes if you need you know, information pretty quickly, um, you definitely make the call. I would say it's 50-50 between written and you know, verbal communication. Being concise and getting to the point, not being too wordy is extremely important. I would say most of the written communication that I do is via email. And I've learned, I'm t I tend to be pretty wordy when I write. I mean, I'm an engineer, so I think that's like just my style of writing. Um, so when I usually write emails, I try to make everything as concise as possible, make it as short as possible so people don't have to read, you know, too much um, into, you know, all the way down. Usually if you have to scroll, a lot of information is missed. Um, so if there's ever an opportunity to be concise, you know, I always take that and make sure that uh, anything that you can consolidate into one line is done so and not, you don't have 10, you know, lines with repetitive information. I originally would have split, you know, Tandon students and I guess other liberal arts students into like two separate categories where after the first year with Tandon, I think that a lot of people have that automatic mentality where you're not going to ever use writing again, you're not going to have to write an essay, you're never going to have to, you know, do any form of written communication and after that first year you're in the clear. I would say that for, you know, other liberal arts, I mean other majors and other schools in NYU, you know, that they probably have a lot more, uh, you know, written communication classes or, you know, anything that involves writing. They probably have it, you know, a lot more than Canon students do. Um, but I think that initial misconception that after the first year in Tandon, you don't have to write is completely false. For physics, you have to write lab reports. For engineering reports, you have to basically communicate your idea. Um, I think it's a first year class. Um, but you have to create a report and then present it in front of people. So in addition to the written communication, there's also a verbal and you, know, you have to be able to communicate your ideas.
I think one of the biggest things that I learned after graduating and starting to work at Turner was that there's so many other people with so many different backgrounds than what I have. Not everybody comes from the same you know, background and they, you know, whether it be someone from another school in NYU or just another part of the country or another part of the world, everybody has a different way of communicating, everybody has a different way of, everybody has a different way of how they best are communicated to. And so one of the biggest things that I learned when I graduated and started working at Turner was that there are so many other people that have like English lit backgrounds or non-technical backgrounds that you think you would be surrounded by when you first graduate and go into an engineering related job. Um, and I think a lot of the times other people probably excel at certain things where like they shine in, in their ability to communicate you know, an idea that they have. And whether or not they have that technical specialized education that you might have, you know, graduating Tandon, if you're not able to communicate that, then another person who you work with or another person who is outside of the company that you work with, they're gonna look that much better just because they are able to communicate and they, you know, whether or not they have the specialized information that you get from Tandon or any other school in NYU. Um, Without that ability to communicate it, it's, it basically just stays with you and you can't get it out into wherever you need to get it to. I think a lot of the reports that I did in college were related to science matters, which being at Turner Construction and being in sort of a corporate environment where you're, most of the skills that you need is, is you can basically sum it up in, into two categories. It's you have to know what you're talking about. There's like a technical field of what you have to be skilled in and there's also just being able to communicate. For me, I think that most of the reports and most of the you know, papers that I wrote in college, I think the structure of how I put together, you know, whether they be proposals or emails or, you know, whether it be internal or external, I think that Developing or you know practicing you know writing those papers in college uh, definitely helped me, I guess, learn how to you know show that I actually anything that I don't know in that technical bucket that I mentioned earlier, you make up for it in being able to communicate. You shine in a better light if you are able to put together a structured and well you know a structured and concise um, proposal or email or anything that like you send over to another person. Conciseness, I think, is the most important thing. We have a format of how we submit things over, like, I feel like any corporate, any corporate uh, environment has a format of how you submit things because they have clients that are used to a certain way of, you know, receiving proposals, receiving emails. Conciseness, um, be, not being repetitive with information, not mentioning, you know, not being too wordy. Um, I think that that is probably the most important thing. Other than that, if you stick to, you know, the format of the company that you're at, I think that being concise is one of the biggest and most challenging parts of you know sending out anything internally or externally. I think a lot of people when they go into their first interview or second interview or whatever, um, they think it's going to be just like a list of questions that you are going to be asked and you have to have the right answer to everything. For me, when I interviewed there, um, the entire interview with one person was just a conversation about how I studied abroad. And I think that ties back to what I said before, where, you know, you have these experiences that you can talk about, you know, you have these different people where, you know, you met, where you can like, you know, you can build a relationship with somebody. Um, I think that the another, like one of the biggest and most surprising things that I learned when I graduated college is a lot of the stuff that you learn in college, whether it be technical or, or even writing, in some cases, um, you don't actually use. Uh, it's mostly the soft, transferable skills that you develop as you, you know, continue writing, go, you know, to different places, meet different people. That will help you, you know, develop a relationship with somebody who can eventually help you get a job. When I started, they didn't expect me to know anything technical. Um, they expected you to be able to communicate, and they expected you to be able to learn fast. Those are the two most important things that writing, it, it helps you develop that foundation to do both. A lot of the jobs that you now have to apply to, you have to write a cover letter. When people looking at a cover letter, they see how well you write, they see, you know, if you are concise or if you are 
kind of being fluffy, as you want to call it. Um, if you are, you know, just throwing stuff in there that is not really, like, it doesn't really get a point across, I think step number one is they read that cover letter or they read your resume and it's like yes or no that you go into one or two piles. Yes, you are going to be interviewed. Yes or no, you're not going to be interviewed. It's hard to get down on paper what you want to get out. I think in general, because I think that, especially with engineering students, your mind is kind of like you're doing a formula and you don't have enough time to like, you know, put it out on paper, whether it be that or you just don't know how to eloquently write it. Um, I think that being able to write down what you're thinking on paper allows you to, you know, practice how you're going to formulate actually speaking it. And I know those are two different types of communication, but I think that being able to write first is, it, it just helps build the foundation of what you're going to actually say. There's a reason why people write speeches down before they, you know, talk. So when you get to the interview and you are talking with somebody, I mean, whether or not you wrote something down or you prepared it, developing or like having that practice and developing, you know, your base will help you speak more freely and concisely and not, you know, have that repetitiveness or um, be able to just speak more eloquently and, and more convincingly. The non-conventional things that I did at Tandon was go over to Washington Square and study abroad and take classes that are outside of the curriculum that they set for you. It helps you in a way that you don't think will necessarily help you because you're not learning the specialized skills that you're supposed to be cramming into your brain because I feel like you can only learn so many things and um, you know you want to like try to cram in as much stuff as you think is going to be useful. I met so many people that have different backgrounds that you kind of you know come to see is the case when you graduate college and go into the workforce. Um, you I guess develop uh, the ability to you know, understand how someone from a different background or a different education uh, sees things and you're able to, I mean, I feel like if you, you know, experience that early on, you're able to address it later on in life. Those are probably the two biggest things I would encourage freshmen or, you know, whether they be freshman, sophomore, or junior, senior, um, if they're over at main campus, definitely come over to Brooklyn, and if you're in Brooklyn, go over to main campus because there's so many different things, there's so many different people that you could meet. Um, and it'll definitely help you in the future with you know, all the other different people that you're going to meet eventually.